Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Doctor Nuance. Doctor Nuance. Doctor Jones. Doctor Pérez del Castillo. Uh, guests, uh, researchers, scientists, representatives of foreign governments, thank you for being here. Welcome to Uruguay. It is an honor and a very big satisfaction to welcome so many people who devote their lives to working for development. And I stress development because agricultural research is a tool. It's not an end in itself. It's a necessary condition, but it is not enough in order to achieve development. And that is eventually our goal. Actually, to face the challenges of adoption in order to transform the results of research into innovation requires a holistic attitude, di participatory diagnosis, co-management, inclusion in the value chain, man and, and marketing, uh, rural funding, institutional strengthening of the producers, organizations, among so many other challenges for public policies, which should focus directly and differentially the strategies in order to build up competitiveness. This is the key, to build competitiveness in order to build development. This conference, the second World Conference on Agricultural Research for Development, is encompassed by the challenged the challenges as established by the international system of agricultural research in order to comply with the uh, Millennium Development Goals to improve uh, productivity in a sustainable manner, to improve uh, food security, to conserve natural resources and biodiversity, to access markets for the family agriculture, to mitigate and to adapt to uh, climate change. This is current for everybody. What is the roadmap for this World Conference? To help or to achieve uh, principles accepted by all the players in order to improve the value and the impact of research, transforming them in agricultural innovation for, the, for development. So I identify clearly the key needs for a transformation and strengthening of uh, agricultural research systems and to guide the action of all the players at the national, regional, and global levels. In order to do so, we have to define priorities, build uh, partnerships that are smart and synergic to develop human uh, capacity and institutional capacity to uh, attract investment in uh, research and development and innovation. This is your task during these four days as part of the uh, course that started with the cycle of reforms of uh, CGR, which started in uh, Montpellier. And this is the second step where we gather to uh, consider what has been done. But I would like to share with you some concepts and notions. Some things have been said, but from the perspective of public policy or from a government of a country, a developing country, 
with a mid-sized income, in a per capita income, and where uh, agriculture is a lever in order to achieve the well-being of the population. The world, as has been said, has already uh, gone beyond 7 billion inhabitants. And as has already been said, we are well on the way to reach 9 billion before 2050. All of us are inhabitants of this global village. And the main economic and political challenges of our time, uh, environmental sustainability, stabilization of world population, and the end of extreme poverty make us players in the building of the future of this uh, global village. And agriculture is closely related to those challenges. Let's, we are going to reach 9 billion inhabitants, but we have 1 billion who go hungry, as Dr. Nuance said. We have more than 2 billion people who are poor, devoted to agricultural activities all through the world, most in a system of uh, subsistence farming, the uh, strengthening of uh, world uh, food security depends of all the farmers in the world, agribusiness and family agriculture. We have, there are many differences among the different countries, the countries that are here gathered in terms of population, natural resources available per capita, uh, di historical differences, climate uh, differences, infrastructure differences. Some, like Uruguay, are net exporters of food, while other countries are net importers. But we live in the same world, we have the same environment, environment, we have the same uh, hydrological cycle, and we face the same climate change, perhaps with different vulnerabilities, of course, but at the end, we are all affected. This reality forces us and gathers us together. This is the final philosophy of this meeting. What can we do in order to uh, set aside this diagnosis? What is the contribution of agriculture? And what could be our commitment and our contribution as scientists and politicians? We have the privilege and the obligation to follow this roadmap, but we have to reach specific suggestions. Uh, food, world food security is a sum of agribusiness and also competitive production of surpluses of um, family agriculture, and who have to have agriculture not only as a way of subsistence, but also as an opportunity for prosperity and development. And for this, in research and innovation that is adequate for family agriculture, sustainable productive systems, agro-eco-efficient systems, good diagnosis, this is not enough. We must face this conference taking into account the players who are connected to research and innovation. We must face this conference conceiving that it's not enough to create a more efficient research system which uh, includes uh, more, uh, is easier to adopt. And also, we must know that the articulation with public, regional, and national policies is important. That is why, from the Ministry of Agriculture of Uruguay, we offered to host this event. Let me share with you a short story. In October 2009, in Cali, Colombia, at the CIAT, we held a meeting that was uh, 
uh, gathered by Foragro in the framework of the preparation for the first global conference that would be held in Montpellier the next year. I had been invited as representative of the rice growers. At that time, uh, I was and I still am a rice grower, and I was the chair of the National Association of Rice Growers. I think that this is a subject that you will uh, analyze in depth during these days. I had no idea that two months later, President Mujica would offer me the position as minister. But I recall those, uh, that meeting those days of workshops and debates with lots of diagnosis and lots of discussion as something that was very interesting and thought-provoking. So I keep in my memory the chats I had with Gonzalo Zorrillo, with Dr. Joe Tommy, with Dr. Peter Jennings, chats that challenged me intellectually in such a manner, in a manner that I was not used to. And I did not think at that time that I would have to face the challenge that two months later I had to face. How many of those debates have influenced, not only in my makeup, but also in the decision making of the agricultural policy of Uruguay? Now, I would like to introduce you. There was a, we had a video presenting our country, but not the a geography or the economy. But I would like to share with you the vision of public policies in terms of agri agriculture and livestock. As you know, we are quite an urban country with an availability of five hectares per inhabitant and three cows per inhabitant. And we are a country with lots of possibilities. During the last 25 years, we have uh, uh, specialized in goods and services which are intensive in the use of natural resources, especially the agriculture and agro-industrial agri uh, production for export and inbound uh, uh, tourism. This has been considered in our region and in our country as one of the causes of underdevelopment, which would lead to uh, an extractive model, which was more appropriate for the 19th century. But we believe differently on the basis of our comparative advantage. We are building important competitive advantages on the basis of innovation. In Uruguay, the strategy for the development of the agricultural sector is based on competitiveness with social integration and environmental sustainability. Ability. Uruguay has uh, plenty natural resources. However, we prioritize the uh, uh, capacity building as a basis of competitiveness, human resources, infrastructure and science and technology and innovation, which allow us to differentiate processes and products with stability in the uh, rules of the game and also in the regulatory framework. Some examples of those innovations which are public policies, for example, animal health, biotechnology, differentiation of processes, um, livestock traceability, certification, the incorporation of the, con of the environmental added value concept. At the same time, the development of an important public-private uh, uh, institutionality and the definition of policies uh, to build development with inclusion. To adapt ourselves to climate uh, change is important for Uruguay with innovation. Innovation in terms of water harvesting, management of natural grasslands, knowledge of the resilience of our productive systems, biotechnology of adaptation, the efficiency of the use of water. 
but at the same time is policies for international insertion and to gain other markets, which is an indispensable con uh, condition for a country that must export uh, its production standards and controls for food safety, interventions and investments geared towards uh, rural development and the support of family agriculture, of family farming, construction of an important system of agricultural information, georeferencing uh, of farms, uh, soil resources, uh, water resources, georeferencing, uh, individual georeferencing of animals, etc. For uh, uh, strengthening institutional capacity by improving sanitation and the conservation of uh, renewable natural resources. Innovations which are the result of the public private, private uh, governance of uh, research institutions, uh, uh, institutes for seeds, for beef, for um, meat, for uh, milk, dairy products, wine, etc. Public policies are geared also towards the uh, short term problems and also in the full site vision in their design. The, it, which are included there. In, la in the implementation, la the basis is working in, as a network in order to have specific strategies through the complementation of institutional capacity. All of this is building competitiveness, opportunities for our production, and with the defini strategic de definition of building innovation as a public good. The policies of development which are differentiated and oriented uh, based on product, uh, pr uh, productors, producers, organizations in order to compensate for asymmetry is a key for Uruguay because innovations must be conceived as public goods. Uh, innovations are the basis of our competitiveness. Uh, strategic investments will add competitiveness and the organization of the institutions of producers and their strengthening are key in the governance and in the marketing of our products. Competitiveness, investment, governance must allow building development, which in the case of our country, is nothing, no more and no less than improving the opportunities of all our, popu our population. If we speak of agriculture, we have to provide more competitiveness to our production, including producers in the value chains by building development, economic and social development. And we have to be agro-eco-efficient. So we have to be competitive and sustainable. Why? So that the the present will not be a foe of the future. Agriculture and climate change, agriculture and uh, food security, agriculture and environment, sustainability and equity, both intragenerational and intergenerational. This is tied to sustainability. All these subjects are connected and they go together hand in hand Estamos in our agenda. We are convinced finally that the development public of public policies, no, technological innovation, uh, organizational innovation, uh, market access for agriculture's uh, performance are the keys in order to build competitiveness, which together with the investment which will be attra attracted by the public or private sector will allow for a transformation and de development. An agriculture that is eco-efficient and is competitive will, be, uh, will increase the opportunities of many millions of farmers and will improve their quality of life. But with the dignification of the ag agriculture uh, farming activity, with a hierarchization, with inclusion of 
technology of process is our input, but always with eco efficiency. The world will not have food security with poor farmers who are considered as second rate players and with systems that are not sustainable. Señores, señoras, Ladies and gentlemen, we want to be your hosts. No solo queremos, not only we want to, but we will enjoy to be. So, thank you. <laughs>